seven supercars that you can buy for under a hundred grand. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. Okay, listen, we're all guilty of this, especially during a lockdown. How much are old Ferraris? And if you're a Throttle House subscriber, you know that we get to go to some very cool places and drive some very cool cars. But these are strange times, and so instead, we get to tackle the fun, sometimes silly things that you guys have sent to us on Instagram or in YouTube comments as a suggestion. So, supercars. They should be exciting. Exotic. Impractical. Flashy. Expensive. And we've put together a list of seven that we found for under $100,000 USD or about $140,000 Canadian. And we've assembled them in increasing order of supercar -ness. And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe and hit the bell. Okay, so we know that a lot of us can't actually afford the prices in this video, and that's okay, it's all right to dream. And you never know, like maybe if you one day pay off your student loans and you sell that race car project you've been working on for years for a massive profit, obviously, then you could conceivably afford one of these. I mean, that's assuming that you don't account for maintenance costs, repair costs, and insurance costs, but beside the point. And by the way, for us anyway, we think a supercar should be something fast, exotic, maybe a bit compromised, and mid-engined. So let's start with the BMW i8. And for this video, we've partnered with Omaze to give away a 2020 Ultimate Sophisto Edition, which is basically just a funky send-off version of the i8 in an e-coppered trim. It's very cool and you get to win 20,000 US dollars on top. We'll talk more about it at the end of the video, but all you need to know right now is if you want to enter, it's omaze.com slash i8, and your money goes towards a good cause. A used i8 can be had for like 50 grand. But you might actually know it as a car that litters Turo listings everywhere and is probably the most wrapped car in existence, but that's beside the point. Yeah, it might come off as a flashy marketing exercise, but it actually has some very cool things going for it. For one thing, the passenger cell is crafted out of a carbon fiber reinforced plastic, a bit like the strut brace on the M2 competition we drove. And that just means it's very stiff, exactly what you want from a performance car. And the inside is as good looking as the outside. It has a, an occasion about it that a regular sports car just can't possibly compete with. And thanks to its futuristic looking exterior design with sweeping lines and spaceship-like aerodynamics and swan doors that go up, it looks fully supercar, even though the numbers suggest sports car. The numbers being the important thing here, and they're the reason it's at the bottom of this list. Because electric and gas motor combined, even though it makes a pretty healthy 357 horsepower, the zero to 60 time is north of the four second range. But it's mid-engined, very cool, quite special, and it's a hybrid, and that's what all the cool kids are doing these days. Number six, the 2020 Chevrolet Corvette. The C8 Corvette is the only new car on this list, and just now stretches into supercar territory. It's fast, it's exotic, it's cool, and for the first time ever, it's mid-engined. That's right, the engine is now behind the driver and in front of the rear axle. That means better traction, better handling balance, and it gives it that exotic look. And it has the performance to match, even in its base trim. And that doesn't count the more aggressive versions that are incoming. V8, 495 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds. And even though it's the only new car on this list, it's still relatively affordable. Assuming that you don't let greedy dealers get away with markups, which we keep hearing about. Number five, the Acura NSX. 
or Honda NSX for us Europeans. Not only is this a proper mid-engine supercar, it is an absolute legend. It's a car that Ayrton Senna himself had a say in. It may not be the fastest car on the list, and it may not be the most flash, but it's one of the most respected. In the 90s, Honda set out to make a Ferrari-killing supercar, one that was reliable and practical and still very fast and fun, and well, they succeeded. It had a weight distribution that was basically the same as the McLaren Honda F1 car at the time, the legendary MP4-4. They actually designed the car so that the fuel tank was in a location, so that whether or not it was full or empty or if there was a passenger or not, the car still maintained that weight distribution and the handling wasn't affected. And you can get one for as low as $35,000 US. It came with a 3-litre V6 and pop-up headlamps. Yeah, which automatically makes it cool. Number 4. The Audi R8. Okay, now we're talking. High revving, naturally aspirated V10. It's everything we loved about a certain car we just tested recently in California. Classic supercar formula. Big old set of screaming cylinders right behind your head. We've actually recently had a chance to experience what a V10 R8 can be like. It's pretty good. One of the first cars I ever actually had a poster of in my room. The original R8 was, and still is, stunning. The coupe had that massive side blade that you could get in carbon fiber that I was obsessed with. But it's not just a pretty face. It also has an all-wheel drive system that inspires confidence, and yet when you want it to, allows you to pull off huge skids. <laughs> And if you're looking at used ones, you get to go back in time to a magical era where they were made available with gated manual gearboxes. Some people like to clink champagne glasses. Those same people may never have clinked an H-gate shifter. US dollars will get you a 5.2 litre manual V10 Spider. 10 cylinders behind you, gated shifter in your hand, for basically the same price as a four cylinder Porsche Cayman S. A nicely specced one, but you get the point. And if you opt for the V8 version, which you can still get in manual and is still awesome, you can pick them up for like 60 grand. That might be within the realm of being possible at some point in your life. I mean, you might have to forego that overpriced SUV and just use the R8 as your daily for your family. But I mean, they make rooftop carriers big enough to fit kids. All right, I actually couldn't believe it when James called me and told me that you can get McLaren MP4 12Cs for under 100 grand US now. Yep, the car that McLaren built to take on the legendary Ferrari 458 which admittedly has held its value better because now you can get these for about 80 something thousand US. But unlike the manufacturers that preceded it on this list, BMW, Audi, Honda, GM, McLaren only deals with exotics and there's no mistaking that emblem. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the swoosh. Thomas, it's not called the swoosh. McLaren say it's actually a shape inspired by the vortices created by their rear wings. It evokes the aggressive markings of predatory animals and insects. Oh, I, I thought it was something to do with, the, with a kiwi bird and Marlboro cigarettes. What? No, that's ridiculous. Anyway, it is a 3.8 liter twin turbo 592 horsepower engine and crazy suspension that completely eliminates the use of anti-roll bars. So it is a very fast, very comfortable supercar. Yeah, apparently one that's not actually that fun to drive, at least not in comparison to the Ferrari 458. 
It also doesn't have the best reliability record, but it's a McLaren. So it's exceedingly cool and a rare sight in Toronto. So McLaren MP412C, very fast, very cool, but still only number three. Number two, a Ferrari 360. <laughs> All right, funny story. James actually called me the night before we filmed this because he found Ferrari F430s listed as a manual transmission for under a hundred grand. I got super stoked. We went on, we started looking, and we realized that people were listing the the F1 automated manual that needs a new clutch every couple thousand kilometers as a manual transmission. Not cool. The gated manual F430s are actually closer to 150 grand US still. So for this one, we chose a Ferrari 360 with a gated manual, which you can get for under a hundred grand US. So why this one? There are cheaper Ferraris out there, we know that, but this is like a modern era Ferrari. Yeah, it's beautiful. It has a lovely interior. It's elegant. It has curves that the Ferraris that just preceded it didn't have. And it has some real performance numbers. Naturally aspirated, V8, 395 horsepower. It revs to 8,700 RPM. That's under 9,000. Now that's not how that line goes. But the thing is the cheaper ones do have that automated Ferrari F1 manual style transmission, which while very cool when you're driving flat out, isn't the most reliable. Even though I did read on the forums that some guys said it was a lot better than the reputation states. But still under a hundred grand, you can get a gated shifter, manual transmission, high revving V8 exotic Italian supercar. Now that is a supercar experience. This thing came out in 1999. If it wasn't for the extraordinary presence of the newer Ferraris dating it a bit, it could actually be mistaken for a pretty modern design. Yeah, when the 458 came out, it completely changed the game of what a Ferrari could look like. I still think it's one of the most beautiful cars ever made. But the 360 is still all modern supercar, but it isn't number one. Number one, a Lamborghini Gallardo. The Lambo gets the top spot because not only can you have a gated manual, mid-engined, impractical, beautiful supercar, it also has a naturally aspirated high revving V10 with 493 horsepower. And it's arguably not as delicate as the Ferrari. Yep, the Gallardo is like an R8, but it's all about showmanship and noise and drama. This was always the car that I'd save up for in Gran Turismo. And then when I finally got it, I'd switch it to in-cabin mode, which I never did, just to see the raging ball on the steering wheel and then the three air vents on the dash. The Gallardo is the first supercar I actually ever drove. It's special to me. And while the Ferrari 360 might be a better car, the Lamborghini is the better supercar because it's more compromised more ridiculous. And it's funny, we've driven a few Huracans before, and if you haven't seen how much the spider blew us away in the Los Angeles canyons, go and check it out here. Thomas literally made grown men cry at the end. And even though they are amazing, the Huracans are auto only. So maybe for our new versus old series, we need to get a manual Gallardo out and put it up against the Huracan. That could be pretty cool. Let us know about that. But either way, the Lamborghini Gallardo gets our number one spot because for under a hundred grand, it just feels the most special. Okay, thanks for watching. And as we mentioned earlier in the video, we've teamed up with Omaze to give away a 2020 BMW i8 Ultimate Sofisto Edition and $20,000. Your money goes towards a good cause, so if you want a chance to win a brand new Swan Door mid-engined special edition hybrid BMW, go to omaze.com slash i8. Good luck. Oh, hey, uh, that was fun. Supercars, eh? Crazy what you can get under 100 grand. 
Uh, a lot of people have been asking for cheaper cars, you know, new cars, things under 10 grand. So I think we're going to make our next video the cheapest hypercars you can get under a million dollars. Right? I'm only joking. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs>